Hi, I'm Mike Schutte. I live in Wilmette. I'm the proud over, um, owner of a geothermal system. I had it installed in 2008 and with the intent of reducing my usage of fossil fuels. At the time, I considered both a solar system and a geothermal system. What was recommended to me was a five ton geothermal system or a five kilowatt solar system. However, at the time, the solar system was about 50% more uh, in cost than my geothermal system was. So I went with geothermal. I also was aware at the time that Comet's electrical generation was about 50% due to nuclear power and, and not fossil fuels. And so I figured my carbon footprint would be reduced greater if I went with the geothermal system. What was involved in the installation was the placement of two units in my basement, which you see here. One on my left is a three-ton system, which services both my basement and my first floor. And here on my right on the floor is a two and a half ton system, which services my second floor. The reason that I have two units is that originally I did have two furnaces, one for the basement and one for the or one basement and first floor and one for the second floor. And so I was taking advantage of the existing ductwork in the house. The unit that services my second floor is actually a split system with a compressor here in the basement, which sends heated or cooled fluid up to a coil and fan system in my attic, which then cools or heats my second floor. The other component of the installation were five 150 foot deep wells that were drilled in my front yard and which were um, filled with a tube running sequentially from each well to the next and through which the fluid that cir um, circulates in my geothermal system to exchange heat or um, cooling with the, the earth itself. The cost of my system is a bit difficult for me to estimate this time since I've lost some of the paperwork, but it was approximately $40,000. However, that included installation of an on-demand gas hot water heater and significant insulation added to my attic. The net cost to me, deducting the cost of the hot water heater and the ins insulation, and also, also the, the tax rebates that I got, I estimate to be around $25,000 or slightly less than that. The effect of my electrical and gas usage was that I achieved a 70% reduction in my gas usage on an annual basis. I still have a gas fireplace, a gas dryer, a gas stove, and the hot water heater, is, even though it's on demand, is a gas water heater. And so those are residual sources of my gas usage. My gas usage in terms of therms went from about 1800 therms per year to 550 therms per year. My electrical usage, however, increased. Uh, it went up by 40% from 14,000 kilowatt hours per year to 20,000 kilowatt hours. I expected some of that because I knew the geothermal system runs more frequently than a conventional um, forced air system. And also there is energy required to run the pumps that pump the fluid through the earth. So what I did not expect was that during um, the winter, my system is inadequate for the heat loss that my house incurs. And so the system has to occasionally, when the temperature gets in the low 20s or below, it has to turn on a supplemental electrical heater in the system, built into the system. And so that ups my electrical usage. My, the effect of my um, gas and electric costs was slightly different. The gas um, cost reduction was the same. So 70% reduction in my gas cost from about $1,670 per year to around $400 or $500 per year. However, my electrical costs only went up by 15% a year from $1,500 to around $1,800. And the reason being is that I switched to, from ComEd's flat rate pricing to ComEd's hourly pricing. And ComEd, because most of its customers have uh, electrical air conditioning, its electrical usage goes up in the summertime and uh, is comparatively less in the wintertime. Whereas my system is the reverse. I tend to use more in the winter and less in the summer. 
And so therefore I get a price break when I have the most demand for electricity and you know the opposite when I have the least, least demand. So that works in my favor. The other thing you need to be aware of when you have a geothermal system, which I feel is important at least because the system is so expensive, it has a, a significant capital outlay. I want to make sure that the equipment lasts as long as possible. For that reason, I have an annual maintenance contract. My, the cost of my maintenance contract is approximately $500 a year. It's that expensive mainly because I have two systems, so I essentially have two contracts, uh, annual contracts. I uh, have found that there are only a couple um, heating and ventilation contractors who are skilled in dealing with geothermal systems, so you really only have a, a small, uh, limited choice of contractors to deal with. I personally use Skokie Valley Air Control and I find them to be um, very good. And also, when you're scheduling a maintenance call for these systems, you have to be, make sure that you request a technician who's skilled in geothermal. I've made that mistake um, multiple times in the past, not making sure I get the germ geothermal specialist and they'll end up sending a, a regular contractor and then I have to send him back home and, and, and reschedule. Other considerations, um, to think of when you're contemplating a geothermal system is that in the winter, the geothermal system produces air that is only a few degrees warmer than the ambient air in your home. And as a result, it's constantly uh, running the, the fan and circulating air in the home to replace you know, the heat loss. Um, for that reason, the, your home can feel a little breezy throughout the day. And so that may feel uncomfortable to you. It's also important to insulate your home well if you're going to have a geothermal system. Again, to reduce the heat loss in your home to enable the geothermal system to better keep up with it and to have to employ the electrical backup heat less often, if at all, um, depending on how well your house is insulated. You also may want to consider sizing the unit larger than what is recommended to make it more capable of handling the heat loss in the winter in your home. In summary, uh, I think geothermal systems are a good way to significantly reduce your natural gas usage, but make sure the system is sized properly and that your home is well insulated. Also, I highly recommend combining the geothermal system with the ComEd hourly pricing to get maximum cost savings. Geothermal does involve a significant capital outlay, and so it may not be the solution for everyone. But regardless, when you're making this decision, you have to compare it against other solutions today. Um, those those trade-offs are different than when I made my choice. Heat pumps have gotten better in the, and operate over a greater temperature range. Solar has dropped tremendously. Geothermal has dropped somewhat too, but I'm not aware of what the current trade-offs are. So make sure you do your homework before making a final decision. Good luck.